their video on the Rubenstein French. And now the Rubenstein French uh, involves exchanges and various things, and we're not going to do what they want. We're going to set up some sort of um, formation that makes it uh, difficult. We never do get the H7 pawn because he moves it to H6. Instead, we get that one. So without further ado, we're going to look at this game. This against Master Rated Blitz Player. This could easily be under my Black Mardemer section. The computer says the strongest move is to pin the knight. He moves uh, knight to d7. So this is really not Black Mardemer in its strictest sense because he turns down our gambit. And this is an interesting situation where by turning down the gambit he allows me to open the f file. Now, I absolutely love this formation for white. Practically plays itself. You're going to see an interesting thing happen in this game, though. The pin is usually made there, threatening e5, creating some complications. Uh, he has to deal with it. If he kicks, um, let's see what the computer said. The computer says I should just take it. Now it says retreat to f4. Interesting. Bishop to d2. None of it says maintain the, the pin. Interesting. Okay. So I retreat to f4. And now he chases me foolishly. And I just retreat again. Now that move there, knight to b6, that's just a weak move. You know, that gives me a great opportunity. He's moving pieces over and over. He should move c5. Okay. He should be moving his knight back here according to the computer. According to Stockfish he should be moving c5. Okay. Now we're not yet ready to push pawn. Although Stockfish wants us to push the pawn. Uh, interestingly this engine wants us to move knight to e2. All these things make a lot of sense. Uh, it prevents the exchange. Now, I self-pin. That's something you almost never see me do. Why would I self-pin? You know, that is uh, just asking for all kinds of issues, and I get the issues here. And you're going to see black actually gets an advantage in this game. This is a strong player I'm playing, so. Uh, self-pinning is almost never recommended. Um, however, I'm going after the h6 pawn, and he has to pay attention to that. And he does pay attention to that. He, he makes the right move, which is to protect the h6 pawn and threaten my bishop, which I protect. So now he's got a, a choice. Does he, you know, chase the bishop? What does he do? Because I'm going to chase the knight right back out of there and have the same threat. And doggedly, I go after this threat. Now it says I should move a3. Instead, I chase the knight. Now this is where he gets the advantage. Okay. However, I'm not so sure the computer evaluation is correct here. I recapture. Okay. So now I have all these doubled pawn islands, and he makes a, a check. Well, the computer recommended he maintains that pin, which might have been a better move. And now the, the computer absolutely says I have to move king to h1, which I do not do. And I'm equally... Um, I, I have this interesting idea that I'm going to attack on the h file with my rook. So I want to move my king to g3. And the question is, is it safe on g3? We'll, we'll find out. Yeah. It says here, due to my errant move, he should be moving f5, opening up the king side, something that I would definitely try. Um, okay, now we're beginning to get an even game here. Now, it's absolutely essential that I prevent e5. So, you know, in, a, in essence, the whole point of my attack here is, in a nutshell, the black white squared bishop and queen's rook have not moved and are, in fact, locked in. Between them, they have one legal move, which is worthless. And it would be taken. So, um, that's why this is an even game. I have this disastrous pawn situation, but he has um, a completely restricted queen side and he's playing what amounts to a queen down. Okay, so now we lock this up. Now f5 again, f5. Okay, so 
he moves his knight. He loves moving that knight back and forth to that square, which is kind of hilarious. Okay, so I don't miss the opportunity to take this pawn. And now all of a sudden, I'm up. Although it's a relatively even game. If he just develops quietly, gets that bishop out, stops playing a queen down, which he does not do. He moves the knight again. So evidently he's in love with moving that knight. Okay. Now it says c4 is a good move. Um, instead I follow up my idea of developing my queen's rook. It, it looks like the king's rook, but I want to get my queen's rook into play also. Now it says I blew it. Okay, The computer says f6 gives him a perfectly reasonable game. Where I was up about 1, now I'm not. I have to be very careful of the e3 square, so um, that is a problem. Now, this is where there's an even game, and this guy makes a strange move. He decides that if he takes my c3 pawn, um, he's going to take my bishop and potentially negate my f3 knight from moving because there's a, a pin on d4 that skewers a queen and rook. So. I'm not quite sure what the idea was here, but he definitely made this move, and that lost the game. So um, these moves do have to be responded to, however, because now he can go knight to, you know, he, he can do all kinds of things still. I mean, there's no, we, we have to play correctly, which as usual I don't do. So, you know, it just says I can take the knight, you know. But instead I move my king. Now at first the computer didn't like that. Now it says perfectly good move just as good as what happened. Obviously not threatening bishop takes g7. So I am uh, rather single-minded in this game. You know, the idea is I want that pawn and I want to checkmate him. So uh, he moves f5 a little too late. Now it says once again I should just take the knight, which I don't do. And now I've, I've given up an advantage of 4 for an advantage of 1.6 if he just moves his queen to c7. So um, I don't really think the queen to c7 is uh, the most amazing or best move he can make. So, the computer thinks so, although it does have me having a winning advantage now again. So, instead of moving his knight back, which uh, this computer recommends, this uh, program, he, uh, he takes my pawn and goes down 10. So this was a massive blunder at this point. Uh, he was under a lot of pressure, and now he loses his queen, and the game's over. So we check, and as you see, the queen's gone. So um, and basically, he's got his choice of how to lose the queen. Um, so that that's the end of this game, and I thought it was an interesting idea of attacking out of a, a formation along the H file which did work out okay. Um, even though the computer wasn't completely in love with it, uh, we ended up winning the game.